Thanks for three minutes. I, I thank the chairman. I welcome uh, Chairman Bernanke to our hearings. Uh, yesterday, uh, Mr. Bernanke, you said that the outlook, uh, economic outlook, remains uh, unusually uncertain, and a lot of people would certainly agree with you on that. Uh, and yet, the free market economists uh, don't find it unusual. They find it was predictable. They expected it. And they're also making predictions that current policies are not going to solve our problem. We've had two years at a chance to take care of this with the usual uh, fiscal and monetary answers. And in the course of these past two years, we spent $3.7 trillion. In that period of time, uh, the uh, real GDP essentially hasn't moved. And uh, unemployment is, is a disaster. Yesterday, you even mentioned we lost 8.5 million, million jobs. And the real rate, of course, is much higher. Free market economists says it's over 22 percent. And even the BLS uh, says it's at least 16 when you count everybody. But uh, so, so far, we don't see any good signs of anything happening. But this, of this $3.7 trillion we spent, it's interesting to note that it's almost identical to the number that our national debt went up. And I guess it shouldn't be too surprising, but uh, so we, we pumped in $3.7 trillion, and that's both fiscal and monetary, and we end up with more unemployment. And the most anybody can say is, well, if we hadn't done that, it, we would have lost even more jobs. And I think that's a pretty weak answer for the policies that we have today. But just putting a pencil to this, it's interesting to note that if we'd have taken this $3.7 trillion and uh, put that to these uh, 8.5 million people who lost their jobs, you could have given them $435,000 in, in individual. I would think that is not a good result, and it's a gross misallocation of resources. So the more we pump in, the more we bail out, the more the unemployment goes up. Today's statistics weren't very helpful. So something's wrong with, with this type of stimulus. And it just behooves me to wonder which way are we going, when, when are we going to stop, and think that uh, may, maybe we're not on the right course. Of course, we can look at more current uh, statistics in the last month or two and say, oh, everything is on its way up. But quite frankly, if you've been unemployed and unemployment's getting worse, uh, they're not waiting for a double dip. They've been in one big dip. And uh, the fact that there's a few statistics that show that there's been a bump in the financial markets, it really doesn't reassure the people. So I'm looking for the day that we look at the fundamentals, looking at, looking at our monetary policy, looking at our fiscal policy, and just wondering, how did we get in this mess? And someday I would also like to suggest that the people who were right on this for the past 10 years knew about the bubble, warned about the bubble, said this was coming. I don't even know why we just don't talk to them and say, how are you guys right, and what have we been doing wrong? I yield back. I, I thank the, uh, the chairman. Uh, the chairman mentioned uh, a little while ago about my emphasis on spending. And I want to just clarify something. I am uh, not opposed to spending. I'm just opposed to the government spending. I want the people to spend. I want them to spend a lot more money. But, you know, in the past, I've often approached economics and monetary policy from a constitutional viewpoint, and quite frankly, I don't get very far on that, so I don't want to push that, which is disappointing. And, and a lot of times I mention the, uh, the business cycle coming from a free market perspective, indicating that low interest rates uh, will encourage malinvestment and cause the financial bubbles. And I haven't gotten very far on that, but today I want to approach it slightly differently from a moral viewpoint. Uh, and see if there's any concern of, uh, of yours in this regard. Uh, back, back in uh, 2002, you, you gave a speech, uh, and you said that the people know that inflation erodes the real value of government debt, and therefore uh, that is in the interest of the government. And, and I can understand this because real, the real debt goes down if you can erode the, the value of the money. But to me, there's a moral component to this because you're depreciating the currency. You're devaluing the currency. And I always thought that the purpose of government would be to protect the value of, of the currency and that people do suffer from this. So uh, to me, I, I, I think that uh, uh, it's not fair because the people of holder of debt, uh, uh, you know, are, are cheated in, in many ways. 
ways. But, but also, there's a moral component, too, when you fix and manipulate interest rates that uh, those who save, you know, that old-fashioned idea that people should save and put money in the bank and they have their CDs and they feel responsible, they want to take care of themselves, and they're elderly and they have CDs, all of a sudden they get 1 or 2 percent, where the market would say they're getting 6 or 7 or 8 percent. That, to me, means that they're being cheated as well. And also, you have emphasized and you have always had a concern about deflation, uh, I think of deflation more being a monetary phenomenon than prices going down, but your definition is it's prices drop, you're having deflation, and you don't like that. And, and you have made attempts to distinguish different reasons for prices going down, but generally speaking, prices going down is helpful. I mean, this helps poor people. You know, wh why, why shouldn't we welcome prices going down so that people can compete and go in and buy things rather than protecting profits or the businessman or high labor costs or whatever. Uh, the market is supposed to protect the consumer. So to me, I see there is a moral component to that. Could you uh, comment on, on these Certainly, remarks? Certainly, and I think you raised some good points. Um, on protecting the bondholder, the Federal Reserve's, half of the Federal Reserve's mandate is price stability, and inflation is very low, and so people holding bonds are making real returns. That is, nominal interest rates are above inflation, and that is one of the reasons to try and maintain stable prices, which is what we're, we're doing. With respect to um, fluctuations in interest rates, nominal interest rates uh, are not determined by the market because you, alone, because you need to have some kind of monetary system. Now, of course, that could be a gold standard. There are many different ways to structure your monetary system. Our current system is a, uh, is, is a central bank-oriented system, as you know. Um, and the variations in nominal interest rates reflect the monetary policy that we take. But what I'm trying to argue here is that no matter what kind of system you have, there's going to be some policy component to interest rates, not just a free market component. On deflation, there have been periods where deflation has not been harmful. In the 19th century, there's some examples where high productivity brought down prices, and that was good. But remember, if in general, if prices are falling, wages may also be falling. And the real question is, what's happening to wages relative to prices? The 1930s, I'll, I'll end quickly. The 1930s, obviously, is a case where a very sharp deflation was counterproductive and helped cause a deep... Uh, and I might, I might respond also, the point you make about the latter part of the last, uh, of the uh, 19th century, uh, when it was beneficial, we were also on a gold standard, too. And uh, maybe that, you know, should be, make a strong point. A very quick question. Uh, is there a point where you might say, maybe my theories are wrong and I have to change my course, or will, will you pursue this for five more years or ten more years? What would it take to make you reassess your basic fundamental beliefs? <laughs> pursue what? The, uh, I, I believe that it's not practical to go to a gold standard. I think we have to stay with a central bank. But certainly we're modifying our views on the financial system and on monetary policy reflecting what's happened in the last few years. And I, I certainly believe, as Keynes once said, when the facts change, I change my mind. But, but there's nothing that would come across and say this system is failing, that we don't get the economy moving. Maybe just spending and inflating and increasing the balance sheet doesn't work. It, it, what, if, what if the unemployment rate you know, even according to government statistics, goes up to 20 percent, and we're worse off in two years from now. When you say, maybe we have messed up? Gentlemen's time has expired. Um, <coughs> next. Uh